Now, the other reactions that I showed you had all of the chemicals in the same phase. They were all gases. But what happens when you have liquids and solids and gases, maybe even mixed up in a reaction? Well, solids and liquids, which isn't in this reaction anyway, they do not get placed in the equilibrium expression. And that's because solids and liquids don't change their concentration. So if I chip off a piece of this, uh, this piece of matter here and say, what's the concentration, basically, really, what's the density of, of this piece as opposed to the remaining piece, they're the same. Solids and liquids don't change their concentration, so they don't go in the expression. Did you notice in those last expressions that we wrote, when we write K equals the concentration of one product, say, over the concentration of maybe two others, the K value is a constant. It's always going to be the same number at a given temperature. But you know, we can have different concentrations here, here, and here, and as long as the math equals this, then that's at equilibrium too, and it's fine. So we can have different equilibrium positions for the chemicals, but they can still give you, and must give you, the same K value. Okay, but here's the thing. That means that you can alter the concentrations of chemicals, but you can't alter the concentrations of solids or liquids. They're inalterable. Unalterable? Disalterable? Whatever. So the point is, they don't get put into the expression. And that means this. For this reaction, you would write K equals, well, there's the CO2. So you write concentration of CO2. And then you go, well, that's a solid. And then over, over what? Well, that's a solid too. So it's really just over 1. And so the K value actually equals whatever the concentration of the CO2 is. It's that simple and straightforward. Don't include solids, don't include liquids, unless, unless all the chemicals are liquids. Oh boy. Okay, the thing is, you can actually change the concentration of liquids because as these two liquids here, which is ethanol and acetic acid, make this ester called ethyl ethanoate and water. The densities are different of these different chemicals, so the volume changes in solution. And when the volume changes, concentration can change. So I know that's confusing, so here's the only exception. Solids and liquids never put into the expression unless you have all liquids. And then it's a concentration of this times this divided by the concentration of this times this, and that equals K. So, what if you have all solids? Well, you just won't. But all liquids, look out. You can tell a lot about a reaction just by looking at the K value. So here's two reactions up here. We've got water forming from its elements, and we'll balance it with one half O2. And let's say at some temperature, don't know what, that the K value for this is 2.30. Okay. Now, Here's the formation of ammonia from its elements balanced with the lowest whole number ratio instead. The K value here is 2.4 times 10 negative 6. There's a difference between those two numbers. Now, what is the significance of this K value? Well, 2.30 tells you this, that when you write the expression for this, the equilibrium expression for this reaction, which is here, it's the H2O divided by the concentration of H2 and the O2 to the 1 half power. That just means square root, doesn't it? The one half power means square root. One third would be something like uh, the cube root of something, right? Okay, so just thought I'd throw that in there, a little bit of math for you. What does the K value of 2.3 tell you? It tells you that the concentration of the products is greater than the reactants at equilibrium because this divided by this gives you a number that's greater than 1. And if this divided by this gives you a number that's greater than 1, then this must be higher than this in terms of its numbers. So what we say is a K value that, me, that has a number greater than 1 means that the products are favored in terms of the amount that is produced at equilibrium. Now take a look at this one. 2.4 times 10 to the negative 6, if that's the K value for this reaction here and this expression, then that means then that the numerator is less than the denominator the well, denominator must be quite large and quite small to give us such a low value. Remember, that's not a negative number. It's just less than 1. 
you can't have a negative K value. If you ever calculate a K and you get a negative value, you've got a negative concentration somewhere and that ain't possible. So don't be doing that. When you have a K value that's less than 1, that means that there, there are more reactants than products that are formed at equilibrium. That's straightforward.